In this video, we're going to show you how to escape the nine to five and find financial freedom through property. How are we going to do that, Adam? We're going to show you how you can find the right strategy for you that will get you that financial freedom from property investing. Then we're going to show you how you can educate yourself and then find the right team that could put everything in place to get you where you need to be. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm Adam. Watch this video, like and subscribe, please. Escape the nine to five really, first and find all. financial freedom from But what property. is financial freedom? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's different. Some, some people have an idea of what it means. I've written here, it's doing what you want with your time and not having the biggest bank balance in the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think financial freedom means you need loads of money. But it depends what you want to do with your time. I've always Whether you need a lot enough. of money or not. Uh, yeah, I've, I've always used I mean? the word enough. Mm. So if you have enough. You've got four um, kids, you need more than money. I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need as true. much as, as you to be financially free. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, so well, everybody's yeah. different. Everybody's different. Mm. I think one of the first things you've got to do is figure out what your number is and, it, and, and keep reassessing that because it will keep changing. One of the things I like about property is if things change, and well, if, when, when things in your life change, because they definitely will, you can um, wake up in the morning and say, right, my property portfolio this year needs to change in this way in order to accommodate that or hit this new goal or mm. make, make whatever I want happen. And yeah, property um, allows that. You know, for example, being a millionaire isn't financial freedom if you're still trapped in your day job, yeah. right? So if you're running, let's say you, let's take you for example, we've got, you've got your portfolio, you've got your lettings business, sourcing business, right? Um, you're not financially free unless you feel you don't have to turn up for work in the lettings business and the man, the property, which you probably could get away with now, not having to be there as if much. We, if we didn't want to keep growing. Yeah, yeah, true. Then, um, but then that's I your like, ambition and you want to yeah. do it. We were, um, a couple of years ago, we got to the stage in work where I guess, you know, business, um, lettings business, where I didn't need to run it itself. But then we wanted to grow, so I yeah, started turning up again, didn't I? <laughs> well, true. Um, but but <coughs> property-wise, um, that, that takes care of things and always has done since you know, my 30s, early 30s. And I think that gives me the, um, the drive, the get up to go and do the, the mm. you know, go, go, go to work. I don't, I don't, I, I've tried not working and it gets, it gets very boring very quick. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think financial freedom is a really good point. Um, one of the first things you, you want to do is figure out what that means to you. Mm. And it probably doesn't mean sitting on a beach doing nothing you get really bored it, really it also means what does sort of the the property side of it mean to you because i spoke to a chap this week who um has a really high paid job he's self-employed but he has a really well paid he does well from it and he owns like 30 odd houses and he said property is a massive ball lake for him that was his phrase right and when i dug into it he has a letting agent but only has them deal with maintenance. Mm. And when I asked him what he really meant is, he does all the rent collect himself, he does all the tenant conversations himself, and then he uses the letting agent to deal with the problems the tenants tell him they've got. And he tells me property's the biggest ball ache, I don't know why I do it. I said, I don't know why you're managing a managing agent and why you're yeah. crazy. Yeah. He could be financially free from property because he showed me, shared me his portfolio, it's amazing. Mm. He's done really well. That's um, a strange decision. Unbelievable. So I've sent him, uh, you know, mm. some thoughts, opinions on how he could be literally, totally hands-free of it. Because mm. he'll be he paying the his, agency something. He's paying him something, yeah. And Crazy. Yeah. Um, but he could be financially free from property, doesn't realise it. Slightly he's different giving setup. himself a massive yeah, job. he's giving himself a job. And he's, he's not mm. trusting that the people who are going to do the job are doing the job, that's which right. that's yeah. silly. Yeah. Right? You get a new agent then if you don't trust them, or do trust them, but be sure you can trust them. You know, put the parameters in also, place, get the reports. Also, you only had one out of 30 with arrears, and it was manageable. Hmm. I don't understand what the ball ache is, hmm. but for, so for some people it's oh. mindset. Oh, no, no, mindset, no. So, mindset, so mindset. I can understand yeah. what the ball ache is. Even, so I, um, well, we have a property management department, and everything's running <coughs> smoothly, it's fine, but there's how many? Yeah, suppose, Hundreds right. of phone calls? Yeah, true. And, and that's a ball ache. I mean, it's yeah. a job. It's not, for, for the property manager sat in the chair in the office, it's not a ball ache their job it's what they're doing yeah. but if you're taking that phone call and trying to do that it's it's um 
there's peaks and troughs. You know, you, you, you might sit there as a landlord and trying to be doing that. We're probably getting on to some of the other bits down here yeah, because yeah. you were getting the, uh, but you can definitely get yourself kind a of, job. Uh, so, Mike, the reason I brought that up is because yeah. I believe financial freedom is being able to do with your time what you want. You know, there's a Bob Dylan quote. He said the most successful man is the man who gets up in the morning, goes to bed at night, and does what the hell he wants in, in between. In between, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you want financial freedom from property, your mindset has to be pretty much that somebody, some company, someone else, a team somewhere else is going to do all of the work for you. You're just going to put the money in at some point. Mm. And that's a big thing for a lot of people to get yeah. their heads around. Yeah. Um, I, I, there's always this conversation, which should you aim to be a landlord or investor? And the idea yeah. of um, being a, an investor, passive, hands-off, I love that as a, as, 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 as a, as a thought process. Mm. I always would like to bring it back to say, you know, you've also, you also are a landlord, you're in the business yeah, of being yeah. a landlord, <coughs> and you need to recognise what your responsibilities are and be engaged with the idea of wanting to own properties, provide decent and safe homes for tenants, totally. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if you're going to um, any anything, you can get too involved. If you buy a business, run a business, you know, at, at some point you, you you're too involved. Everybody's got to learn as you grow yeah. um, to to um, become a bit more hands off. That's just that's just a, a, a fact so, of the matter. If you don't, you won't hit your goals. Because when we come on to what the goals are now. Uh, one of the questions we got, we, we, we've got, we've asked for some questions. You know, what does, what's the number of, of um, properties we're going to need to get to financial freedom? It's a reason, it's a bigger number than most landlords think. Mm -hmm. So you definitely just can't do it yourself. It's just, it, it just can't. And if you set yourself out to do it, it will hold you back because yeah. you get to a point where you think, this is a ball ache. Yeah, I don't totally. want to do it. Uh, you'll also, at some point, I mean, this chap sounds like he's being lucky so far, but he's probably not best qualified to do it. He's probably, probably at some not. point in the future going to get some hand grenade that's exposed in front of him and go, oh, you didn't do that. Which case yeah, is a fine bit. And uh, you just lost some, lost some money and that'll be, that'll be a bigger ball ache, won't it? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right, because we've had all these technical issues and people can't get in, we can open this up and be a bit more interactive. And I noticed that Stefan has just popped a question in or a comment. What's the question? In. What was that? Having a choice, including to continue Un working. Unmute. Stefan, you like to be unmuted and just say what you put and we'll just, yeah? I think we'll have to unmute you. Can you ask him to unmute? Oh, yeah. Stefan's a client of ours. I trust him. I know he's not going to start, <laughs> start swearing and stuff, so it's all good. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, hello, yeah. Stefan. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hi, very well, thank you. Good. Uh, it, it was more of a comment that I think financial freedom is about having a choice. Yeah. It's the freedom to have the choice, so you can continue to work if you want to. You can continue to work and expand the portfolio if you want to, so that you have even more choice in the future, but mm. it's kind of reaching that level. So, yeah, totally agree. So you've got properties with us. We've got some going through at the minute. Um, I mean, I've, I sent you an update early, didn't I, on the renovation yeah. side, <laughs> and we've, we're trying to get another one bought for you. Why are you doing it? Um, because Tell I was a bit slow with pensions. Right. And so realized that I wasn't going to have enough time to have a decent pension. And I'm also self-employed, so I needed the flexibility that if I've got gaps between work, that I've also got an additional source of income to act as like an insurance. Sure. But that's kind of what got me into doing the property and kind of built it from there. Nice. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, we'll keep you. opening it up today yeah, and we can be a bit more interactive because yeah, there's a few people. Yeah, so that, that is, that's it, a choice. That would be the, the one yeah. word. Yeah. Brilliant. I, I think you, you mentioned something earlier, which was it's possible to have a big salary but not have the choice. Yeah. Or equally, and, and or, you can do doing, doing both, spending it all as well. How many of your mates, because you've got quite a few mates who all seem to have their own businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. You mentioned different people. I know you're going to ask. Right, but how many of them say something to you like, oh, I can't get out of this all of job them. because all of I them. can't let the company run all for itself. Them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they're all, you know, mm. you, you pedal harder and harder and harder. So mm. they can't get out of it. And also every penny, not all of my mates do this, but, but I, I know some that do, you know, every penny of the money that's made comes out and gets spent. Yeah, yeah, stuff. Cars yeah, all the days, yeah, big yeah, house, all that kind of stuff. stuff. So you can definitely spend more, you know, you can be earning a million pounds a year and spending a million and 10 pounds and you're broke. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that happens. <laughs> you know, you might think you've got a nice life, but actually you, 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 you're building in stress. Mm. Um, one of the nice things about property, I'm gonna do my, I know time-wise, but I'm gonna do my bottle of wine thing. 
Go on. It's the, it's the fact you can, that financial freedom, this is um, a little bit of an analogy to show you that it's just within reach of almost everybody, well, within reach of everybody. So, because we're lucky, we live in the Western world, we've got national minimum wages, this is within reach of everybody. So the, the thing about a bottle of wine is it costs five pounds no matter what's in it. If you fill it full of water um, or, or grape juice that's alcoholic because it's got the tax duty on it and you put it on the shelf in a supermarket, it costs five pounds. So if you're buying a bottle of wine for five pounds, the wine didn't cost anything. Yeah. If you it for six pounds, the wine is a pound's worth. If you buy a bottle of wine for 10 pounds, then the wine inside is worth five pounds. So going from a five pound bottle of wine to a 10 pound bottle of wine, you've gone from vinegar to five quid's worth of wine. If you spend 20 quid on a bottle of wine, you've got 15 pounds worth of wine inside the bottle. Now, of course, it gets to a point when, you know, you probably just pay in because it's got a name on it. Yeah, and it of course. doesn't get much better. I mean, I've drunk a 50 pound bottle of wine and a 500 pound bottle of wine and yeah, prefer the 50 quid bottle of wine. But definitely, if I'm drinking a five pound bottle of wine, I can tell the difference, okay? So, what I'm trying to point out there is, everybody in the UK lives within a certain band. 90, 99, 98% of people live within that band. So whether you are on national minimum wage or whether you're a high paid, I don't know, use the client, doctor, dentist, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. whatever. Um, you, you take the national minimum wage and the uh, yeah what the what the ninety eight percent person and it's not the ninety ninth and the hundredth percent and that's what they do differently typically sure. they own properties and they yeah they take that that salary and that salary it's about ten times and if you spend the other thing would be what can you spend on a car cheapest car most expensive car that's a car not just you know like a supercar that's you know something to get around a to b what's a, the cheapest house that you can buy that's not a wreck and you know, normal parameters and not a billion pound mansion just normal what what 99 percent of everybody lives in lunch going for lunch five pound sandwich or 50 quid lunch you know 10 times you know the point is financial freedom is just a little bit further ahead because all you've got to do is get slightly ahead of other people mm. and that, that, that's it it's within your grasp if you can just work hard save and invest and get a little bit more than enough and it does mean you know, work hard save invest maybe a bit, a bit of delayed gratification all has lived within your means that little bit of spare money over um, can go back to building the portfolio and you can work your way to a position quite quickly I mean it might a decade is actually quite quickly isn't it? yeah start early enough big time you know I think you could probably do it with five five years um, and you know, if we're talking about escape the nine to five and find financial freedom from property, that's the basis of it. Just getting a little bit of ahead of everybody else, and all of a sudden you look around and go, "Well, you know what? I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a hourly paid job, maybe, but I, I'm, we've got a few clients like this. Uh, but I'm, I'm living with the doctors and the dentists because I've just got a little bit ahead and I've got four, four houses, mm. and that extra is all I needed to do that." Definitely. And then you've got the choice whether you go from there, go up, go more, or or, um, or stick with where, where you're at. That's, that's a choice, isn't it? But yeah, don't know if that makes there sense. There we go. No, All right, no. cool. So um, next thing I was going to just run through is who we are. Um, we are for the landlords.com. We're a letting agent, but we can source and renovate property as well. So we have a, an all-round service, and we've been going over 10 years, and we are now the UK's number one we property are. sourcer. Mm. So um, leads us into the next bit. So the first real step on the road to finding financial freedom from property is knowing what your strategy is. Because if you've spent any time on YouTube or the internet, you've read any books about property investing, there's multiple strategies of, of how you can invest and stretch your capital pot out the most. Um, I've listed four, the four main ones, which I think if you're gonna try and be really clever and smart, you'll just make mistakes. You have to keep it simple. Mm. Um, you've got vanilla buy to lets, two and three bed, semi and detached houses where the ordinary people live, young working professionals, families, 65, 70% of the population live in those sorts of houses, hence why they're really sound investments. Yeah. Um, 
We've they're just easy. Easy yeah. to understand. You can find them easily. These, are, yeah. So we're going to go fit, pros and cons easy. of each yeah. one. So the pros and cons of vanilla vanilla bar to let's are the pros are you've started it. Well, um, so easy to find. E easy to understand. You, you look at a terraced house or a you know a nineteen eighties vanilla box and everybody gets it. Mm. Um, there's not much work to do. There's not much stuff that can go wrong in the building yeah. physically. Yeah, so the roof could blow up, blow off, and the border could blow up. You know, but if you get a structural survey at the big survey at the beginning and it's standing up straight, you can see everything with your eyes, and that what can go wrong is you know, three, four, five, six thousand pounds worth of money. Yeah, that's it. So you can you can understand it. Mm -hmm. Easy to find, easy to finance, easy to fix. Yeah. Easy to rent out. You know, the fad for families mm -hmm. isn't going to go away. A two or three no. bed house, they just rent. Um, if, if if one of those houses isn't renting, there's only two things that could be wrong with it. It's it could be in a bad condition, and you can see that with your eyes, like paint it, fix the damp, whatever. Uh, or it's the wrong price. Otherwise, it should. That's it's it. easy to say. It's easy to understand yeah. what they're worth as well, because yeah. there's so many of them. Yeah. It's not yeah. like a a new build block of flats which has been chucked up, not close to any other flats. So people, are the, the first yeah. people to buy those flats are probably paying too much for them. Yeah. If you're buying a a house that's been on the street for a hundred years, there's tons of those houses are all mortgaged up. Loads of them are being sold and resold all the time, yeah. so you just know what they're worth. Yeah. And you can go on any internet website and work out what you think you're going to get in rent. Yep. They go up in value consistently. If you were to buy something like the blocks of flats, they're a little bit up and down. Mm. Um, if you were to do a you know, massive conversion of a pub into something or whatever, whatever it, it, it's rock solid. There's, there's a row of terrorist sure. houses. They are worth what they're worth. They're dead simple yeah. to understand. And that really helped. <clears throat> at some point you may want to sell them yep. well there's a ready resale market as well which you know Definitely. for some of these flats you'll see them sat on the market for a long time they're not or yeah the, the bit where you buy a, a student pod or whatever there's no resale market so it's dead easy Indeed. to get in get out understand so the, it's, the, it's the, the downsides i would say are they cash flow relatively sort of lower than than sort of a hmo would because mm -hmm. it's just one tenancy one family mm -hmm. um it's, that's not necessarily the worst thing, though, as long as it cash flows. As long as it cash flows. I Positive think. cash flow. Yeah. You're going to what, if you do it right, if you buy refurb and refinance a typical buy to let property, you should be making about 250 to 300 quid a month, roughly yeah, speaking, depending on the mortgage rate you got at the time. Yeah. Um, but where rents are now, I, I'm expecting that. Yeah. Now, some people want to make a thousand pounds a month from a property, then you need to do something else. Yeah. Um, and you need more of them. To be, if you want just those types of houses to be financially free, you need. I'll come on to that in a bit. Yeah. Ten to fifteen, probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that it takes a little bit longer. No, I, it downside con. Yeah, the fact that it takes a little bit longer, and it's you know, slow and steady. Um, <coughs> the cash flow is less. But that's all, you know, it's the tortoise and the hare, isn't it? it is, yeah. I, I like that. I like yeah. knowing that it's, it's slow and steady. The reason it's slow and steady is because I'm building equity and I'm laying those mm. equity bricks down as, as you go.